Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan. Today I will be talking to you all about quantifying the life expectancy gap for people living with sickle cell disease. We all know that sickle cell disease is the most common inherited red blood cell disorder in the United States, affecting an estimated of close to 1 lakh people. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, sickle cell disease affects one out of every 365 black or African American births and one out of every 16,300 Hispanic American births. A new study published in Blood Advances, it finds that the average life expectancy of publicly insured patients living with sickle cell disease is roughly around 52 years. In contrast, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, it reports that the average life expectancy in the United States is 73.5 years for men, while it is 79.3 years for women, demonstrating the considerable burden sickle cell disease can have on affected populations. The study included close to 94,000 individuals with sickle cell disease. Authors reported that 5% of participants had Medicare, Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund, 4% had Medicare for disability or end-stage renal disease coverage, 48% had Medicaid and 43% were dually eligible for Medicare and Medicaid. Of the study population, 74% were black. Investigators confirmed the death dates using death certificates provided by the National Death Index. However, the study also found that those insured by Medicare for disabilities or end-stage renal disease and those dually insured by Medicare and Medicaid had significantly worse survival outcomes among the populations studied with an average lifespan of 51 years at birth. The authors highlighted that the study demonstrates a persistent life expectancy gap among individuals with sickle cell disease even though they are covered by public insurances. Differences in life expectancies of individuals with sickle cell disease across different public insurances most likely reflect the differential burden of comorbidities. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.